the points. I just want to say two things about the situation here and about the movement. The first is that um, we, it's impossible to overstress the level of anger that there is in British society around these kind of issues that we've been discussing today and around a whole range of issues, to be honest. The Gaza demos were not just the biggest demonstrations that uh, we've seen in the anti-war movement since 2003. They were the most militant and the most radical demonstrations, as anyone who saw the videos will have been reminded of. The student occupations were an absolute breakthrough. They weren't just the first occupations on a mass basis since uh, the 1980s. They were the first uh, occupations for decades around issues about uh, uh, international affairs, around issues about imperialism and so on and so forth. And this represents, I believe, uh, it's an expression of an accumulation of anger around Palestine, yes, first and foremost, but also, I think, more broadly, anger against Guantanamo Bay, against torture, an extraordinary rendition, so-called, anger over Iraq, anger over Afghanistan, anger about the war on terror in general and the extent to which majority public opinion has been ignored in this country. And I think it's very important that when we're thinking about organising and building our groups, that has to be the starting point. We have to... We, each group has to be a focus. Each group has to be somewhere that brings together all those different strands of anger and expresses them effectively. The second thing, I, 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 the second point I want to make is that the, the anti-war movement, the Stop the War Coalition, has made a difference on all sorts of on all sorts of fronts. But I think crucially, we've had an impact in terms of winning arguments. And they don't report the opinion polls on the war very much anymore. But actually, if you find the results of the opinion polls, they are quite astounding. 63% of the British population, despite all the rhetoric about a good war and so forth, want the troops out of Afghanistan. That figure rises to 75% when it comes to young people. And the figures for Palestine are also amazing. 64% of the British population were against the Israeli uh, action against the people of Gaza. And 34% of the population actually support a boycott of Israeli goods. Now that's a real sea change, I believe. This is a real fundamental shift in public opinion. I think what has developed is a real understanding of the nature of the kind of developing imperialist project among huge numbers of people. And I don't believe this would have happened if it hadn't been for the anti-war movement which so many people have been through and which has touched so many people's lives in different ways. What we have to do is to build on this uh, 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 situation. We need not just to hold the coalition together, but make sure that it expands in every area. And I think practically that means in the next few months, we need to hold a rally on why the troops should come out of Afghanistan in every area. I think we need to hold a rally on Islamophobia in every area as well. And we should seriously launch the petition for troops out of Afghanistan. And we don't just want a few hundred names of the great and the good on this petition. We want to make sure we get tens or preferably hundreds of thousands of people signing up to it. Which means using it on stalls, it means taking it into workplaces, raising it in trade unions, taking it back into the universities, taking it into the schools, making sure that we are conducting that argument absolutely everywhere we can. Get military families locally to front it up, get in the local papers, make sure that we create a splash round this petition everywhere that we can. We also, a number of people have said it during, uh, during the day, we also need to connect what we are doing with the outrage that people feel at the economic carnage that has been created by the uh, big business and by our politicians. When you bring these points up, it is universally seen as a total scandal that at a time when jobs are being massacred, when they're launching the biggest assault on public sector spending since the Second World War, that they're not talking about withdrawing the troops from Afghanistan, they're not talking about scrapping Trident, they're still going ahead with these aircraft carriers, and they're not slashing military budgets. This is an utter disgrace, and it's an argument we need to drive home, because it's an argument that will help the movement in general. I want to end by making two points about more generally about how, how the groups uh, need to operate. One is, we need to bring on the new activists. Thousands of new people have got involved with Stop the Wall Coalition and got involved with the movement literally just over the last uh, few months. And I want to make an appeal to all of them who are here, and I want everyone here to make an appeal beyond this room, and that is to say to them, don't just come on the demonstrations, 
Don't just come to the public meetings and the protests, however important those things might, might be. Don't let other people make the decisions in the local movement, but get on the local committee, turn yourself into an activist and a leader and an organiser, and if there isn't a local committee, if there isn't a local Stop the War, then set one up. Because we need the new ideas, we need the energy, we need the new ways of doing things, and above all, we need to grow, and for that we need new people taking a lead. The final thing, the other thing is that um, what we're really doing, what all this activity is really about, the public meetings, the petitions, the arguments that we all uh, have on the streets and in our workplaces and so forth, is really about preparing once again for action. There's a whole number of events and protests and demonstrations that have been announced today. I can't list them all, but there is, for example, a demonstration on May the 16th over Gaza. Now, it's unfortunate that this demonstration uh, coincides with a, a very important demonstration for jobs in Birmingham, and I've no doubt that there will be Stop the War groups going from the area and beyond to the Birmingham demonstration. And it is important that the war issues are raised on the demonstrations about jobs, but nevertheless, we need to make sure that this demonstration over Palestine, this demonstration over Gaza, once again reflects the anger that so many thousands of people feel in this country over the issue. We need to make sure that no one can say, in the media, amongst the political classes, no one can say that the people of Gaza have been forgotten by the people of Britain. So we need to build that demonstration as, as, as large and as seriously as we possibly can. And by the way, on the question of uh, civil liberties and police violence, there is going to be a demonstration over police violence on uh, May the 23rd, which the Stop the War Coalition is supporting. It's an important demonstration. But in the run-up to the Palestine demonstration, we have already sent, along with PSC, along with the British Muslim Initiative, we are, have already sent a message to the Metropolitan Police that we are demanding, on that demonstration, certain things about how they behave. We are demanding that there will be no riot police. There will be no one from the territorial support group anywhere near the demonstration. We are demanding there will be no concealed IDs and no police officers going around in balaclava helmets. We are demanding that there will be no filming of protesters and we are demanding that the strategy of Kettling, as they call it, the illegal corralling, the illegal arrest of thousands of people will not be used on our demonstrations or we will end cooperation with the police. Mm. Now, very finally, the Afghan petition itself is, in the end of the day, as one of the speakers said, is about building uh, a, a, a head of steam in order to generate action. We want to make sure that sometime in the next few months we are in a position where we can get back on the streets over the question of Afghanistan, we can have more protests and more demonstrations over the issues. But given the, the whole argument of the day today that there are so many flashpoints in the world, that the economic crisis is making the world a more unstable, a more volatile place, every Stop the War group needs to be ready to protest on a potential number of issues that is extremely long, unfortunately, at a few days' notice. So we are not talking about a period of inactivity, we're not talking a period about just winning arguments, we're talking about a period of preparing for action. And very finally, there is something I want to say which actually has been said from these platforms before and similar conferences as this one, but I think the events of January and the incredible upsurge of uh, protest over Palestine makes it an even more credible thing to say than it has been in the past. And I hope you'll agree with me when I say that this conference needs to send a message to the government that if the United States, if Israel, or if any group of Western coalition dares to launch any kind of attack on Iran, there will be occupations in colleges up and down this country. There will be walkouts in workplaces, in schools. There will be direct action in every town and city in this country. There will, in short, be a wave of protest, the like of which this government has, ne has never seen. And we will bring the country to a halt. Thank you very much.